Hello and welcome to a new episode of All Things IDA. Did you know that you can do source level debugging with IDA? So if you have a project that you can build from sources or you happen to have the PDBs for the corresponding binary, then that binary and the PDB will be able to help IDA to locate the sources so you can look at the sources, set breakpoints and single step into IDA. IDA also has watches and high level features that make source code level debugging much more pleasant. Let me show you how we can do that. So as usual, I'll be using our trusty friend Wismo. Wismo, we have the sources. It's made up of two source files, the main.cpp and the actual implementation of that program. Now I have built that program and disassembled it in IDA, as we can see here, that's the debug folder and this is the database. Now all we have to do is simply run that process and I'll show you how we can start looking at the sources and putting breakpoints there and so on. So let's run it. I have a breakpoint in main. Unfortunately, until I have the process running, I cannot open the source file yet, but at least I can select the use source level debugging option to enable that. So let's run it. And now it's running. I can, for example, say debugger and switch to source and it switches to the source file. Equally, if I wanted to put the breakpoints ahead of time somewhere in another source file, so this is the Wismodo CPP the secondary file, I can then go to the debugger and say open source file and select that one. Now I opened both the main and the secondary file. You can have a large project with multiple source files, it doesn't matter. The PDB file will help either find which address corresponds to which file and source line number. So for this program, it's multi-purpose, so it takes lots of command line arguments. And I pass the simple command line argument just to play a sound file. And I know where that implementation is. So the first thing is in the main.cpp, it's going to parse the arguments and check if we pass the play. If it passed the play, it's going to call play file. So play file is in the secondary file here, and I can press alt T and search for play for example takes me to the play file and here I can put breakpoints so at any point I can put breakpoints in any file then let it run and then it will stop at that file now we can sing it step for example and we can move the mouse and select and see the hints so here arc count is 3 arc V I can see the arc V for example and here this is source level debugging this is not the pseudo code we have the source commands and exactly as it is in the CPP file. And again, remember, this is basically the source viewer here. And that's what we are looking at. So you can do the basic debugger things, but I'd like to draw your attention to some high level facilities we can have. For example, in the debugger window, debugger windows, we can have a watch view. This watch view window is a special high level utility that will know how to render source code elements so it's not low level it's not assembly it's not bytes and words and so on so for example we have constructed a wismo object i can right click and say w and here we have a nice the name and nice rendering of the values the members of that class so i can expand that now most of the members have not really been initialized correctly so but it's okay already we can watch that variable Let's step over CMD, for example, and I can also right click and add for CMD. And here, I will tell me where it is and what's the value, what's the type. So this is high level information. That's pretty much powerful than the basic low level debugging. Now, enough with that. I already have a breakpoint. I know it's gonna go to play. So I'm gonna wait for it here. Let it run. And here it is, it broke here. And these are the files as well. Now, since I'm out of scope, the previous watches are no longer be available for evaluation unless I go back to the proper scope. So at least for example here I can watch the stuff that are in that scope. So here this is the files and we can uh, look at the values for example here. That's the wave file that I was playing. And like that, now it's going to play the sound and tokenize if there's something else and eventually return back and finally finish the program. As simple as that. 
So at any point in that program, we can always switch back and forth. I should be able to go back to the disassembly and it is at the same time here. So if I put them here, for example, side by side, as much as there's source code available, I should still see the source code. Otherwise, this is the actual disassembly view. Now, on top of the source file, of course, if I hit tab, this is the decompilation view. And we could have done the same but without the sources. So is this really source level debugging? I would say not necessarily. This is pseudo code level debugging. So also, if you don't know that you can debug while using the decompiler, now you know. So that's it for today. It's really simple. All you have to do is simply build a program with debug symbols and select the source level debugging and open the source files, put breakpoints there, let it run, and so on. Like a regular IDE, but through IDA. All right. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you next time. Thank you.